how? The fear. The one thing which keeps us from the path of progress. The one thing which we must stop if we want to move on from ignorance. At Fire Potato, we are in a constant fight to stay with ignorance and into a path of progress. I welcome you all to the 75th edition of Fire Potato. Uh, in today's session, we'll be learning more on the fascinating field of UJS. Now, before we move on to the, to the session, let me thank everyone, all our speakers, all our audience, who made the world a huge success so that uh, we reached the 71st mark. Okay. Now, before we move on to the actual session, this is the second one. Okay. Uh, let's discuss more on what happened in the tech industry for the last 30 days. Here's me with Tech Bytes. Okay. So first, I think all of you know what WordPress is, right? The current company, Automatic, has recently launched a series of tools known as Happy Tools. Automatic has always been working for everyone to work at their homes or wherever they wish to work. Okay. In that order, Happy Tools has launched the, the first individual app known as Happy Scheduler. Okay, in which you can schedule your work, every freelance work, which you can join in to a group and do the work collectively. Second. Okay, later. In other news, we have Linux, a Chinese company launched in 2014, making the first micro launcher. Uh, by micro launcher, I mean a device, a rocket launcher, which is a meter, vertical takeoff and landing. Okay, in that effort, we are only second to SpaceX who created the same thing. Uh, it is assumed that uh, Link Space has used 2.5 million pounds of the vehicle. Hey. Here's a video, the same stuff. Halt the net connection, but please wait. So, it was this It's that's a new landing, okay? Uh, we we'll move on to the next session. Okay, this is very interesting. NASA has recently uh, given the news that they're trying to make a prop of a helicopter which is planned to fly on Mars. Okay, this is the first time a company, any company, has attempted to fly a propulsion system, a, a throttle system that could be used on another planet. Okay. Yeah. This is also quite interesting. SpaceX has recently, SpaceX, as you all know, is the company of Elon Musk. Okay. So they recently launched as uh, the first passenger spacecraft to the ISS. ISS stands for the International Space Station, as you all know. And uh, in the first mission, it's called the passenger plane, it's called a passenger uh, spacecraft, there's no crew in it. Uh, all in favor of uh, the use of instruments to make sure that people would survive in that. Okay. So, finally, we have Apple. In the latest keynote, 
They launched a couple of apps. Okay, they move from Apple TV, Apple News, Apple Car, and several other things. Okay, let's see what, what they were in short. First, Apple TV. It is quite interesting to see Steven Spielberg starting to build off for the Apple TV. Okay, they're launching a couple of new shows. For TV shows for only for Apple. Okay, only for Apple TV. The, the app is free for all new Apple users for a time, of course. And in second years, we have Apple News, where we have so many prominent player players ranging from Nat Geo and Washington Post. Okay. All events, all all data are curated by Okay, so there is nothing stored in it. So whatever news that you see are not curated from you. That's the basic uh, difference for what Apple says is is what they have. Okay. And that's all about uh, tech buys, the recent things that happened over the last 30 days. Okay. Now you write Manuel Vyas, uh, a developer, an avid speaker, and a, a passionate coder to help you all with UJS, the latest framework, which is quite awesome, I think. Okay, let's welcome Daryl Yes. So now I would like to talk about uh, OJS, the popular front-run web framework. Uh, so in this case, it will be very interesting to know how many front-run developers, uh, I mean those who are already working with or familiar with uh, various front-run technologies like uh, uh, who, uh, any front-run technology like who reacts, and uh, anything. Uh, only a few. Okay. Um, uh, I guess all sitting here are at least familiar with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, right? Okay. Uh, otherwise, it will be very difficult to follow. That's why I asked. Uh, so, Vue.js is a, an open source, progressive JavaScript framework. What do we mean by progressive JavaScript? Progressive. The word progressive means... Happening or developing gradually or in stages, proceeding step by step. That is, development happens on several several steps, step by step, or on several frequent stages. For example, AngularJS is another progressive framework. Uh, its development happens, its release happens on every six months. Now it's Angular, the latest version of Angular is 7, and we are all are waiting for Angular 8. So, UJS is another progressive framework, that is, development happens on various frequent stages. So when we compare it with, with uh, other frameworks like Angular, um, Angular or React, uh, Angular is a framework, but in case of Vue or React, we can consider it as, as let's say, library only. Uh, because um, in frameworks like Angular, it has a lot of built-in features like um, uh, a lot of features like root or HTTP service, all are coming along with uh, uh, built-in features, along with us building feature. But in case of Vue, uh, we need to uh, install it as separate plugins. For example, if we need a, a particular service, uh, if we need a router service, we need to install router as a separate plugin. And if we need a HTTP service, we need to install it as separate service. So, uh, unlike Angular, 
Angular have all these features built in. So uh, in case of Woo, we need to include it as separate, install it as separate plugin from not package manager or we can uh, we can use uh, 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 most of the cases it depends on several our libraries too third party libraries too so uh, it is very lightweight too and we can console it as a small library only it's mainly focuses on Google layer and uh, it's uh, it focused on building user interfaces not a complete framework like angular <laughs> Uh, the main advantage is that uh, it comes as a virtual DOM. Um, you are familiar with DOM, Document Object Model, right? Uh, Document Object Model, DOM is actually a browser built in API that is used for accessing, modifying, or manipulating uh, elements in a in an HTML or XML document. That is, it provides a, it represents a um, logical structure of, of, of an HTML or XML document. Um, so, uh, uh, so who, uh, when we do some changes in the code, it first reflects on the virtual DOM. React also follow the same concepts. Uh, so first changes in reflecting in virtual DOM, and uh, the um, um, and uh, it reflects uh, and it reflects on the actual DOM on the final stage of execution only. React also follows the same pattern. So these are the main advantages of Woo comparing with Angular. One is less complexity. Uh, that is Angular in uh, in case of installation, Angular comes uh, as uh, several series of steps, several complicated steps. Uh, but uh, compared with Angular, uh, in case of Woo, the installation is very simple. And also Angular, it's it's very difficult to follow Angular for beginners because it uses TypeScript. Uh, maybe developers who have background with um, C Sharp or Java, maybe um, uh, they will feel uh, it's very easy because uh, maybe they are they are already familiar with TypeScript. Um, but those who are uh, from core JavaScript backgrounds, it will be a little bit difficult for them uh, because Angular enforces TypeScript. But in case of Woo, we can use standard JavaScript, the same old-fashioned JavaScript. Uh, in case of React, it also enforces JSX. Uh, JSX, uh, it's, uh, th that means uh, in, in Woo, uh, HTML and we use HTML, CSS are as separate. Uh, but in case of React, everything is a JavaScript. That is, HTML and CSS are also a part of JavaScript. It's a J uh, that is called a JSX approach. So everything inside a JavaScript structure. Uh, so in but in case of Woo, it doesn't enforce JSX. JSX is a, or only an optional way uh, in case of Woo. So we can use standard JavaScript and we can use a separate HTML and CSS. So it provides a lot of flexibility. Uh, the other advantage is performance. Performance mainly depends upon the kind of applications, um, how you optimize your code, uh, how big, uh, big, how big is your application. A lot of other factors. So. Uh, uh, but but um, anyways, um, um, the frameworks like Woo and React uses virtual DOM. It surely enhances uh, performance performance up to a particular play. Um, and also compared with React, uh, the virtual DOM inside Woo have better better structure. It have more solid structure than uh, uh, than the virtual DOM of React. Uh, it follows a uh, follows top DOM. Uh, that's the name of the virtual DOM. Um, another advantage is flexibility. That is, uh, it's very uh, easier to merge a and uh, merge Vue.js code with already existing already existing uh, projects. Uh, but in case of Angular, uh, in case of already existing projects, uh, uh, it's very difficult to merge. Uh, and also. Um, Angular JS is entirely different than Angular 2. Angular 2 is entirely different than Angular 4. So it lacks backward compatibility in case of Angular. Uh, it's very difficult to uh, upgrade uh, a project with uh, Angular 2 to Angular 4 uh, because it lacks backward compatibility. Uh, but in case of Woo, uh, latest version is 2.9.6, but latest version is 2.6.1. Uh, it's very backward compatible uh, compared with both uh, Angular and React. Uh, and also it works with standard JavaScript. 
um, that it's uh, it it doesn't enforces JSX or TypeScript. Uh, but Angular enforces TypeScript. Uh, React enforces JSX. But we can use simple uh, old-fashioned uh, core JavaScript code in you. And also, um, uh, it has very less dependencies. That is, it's very very lightweight library. Um, uh, Angular have all the built-in features needed for a framework. Uh, it consists router, HTTP service, Angular form, various features like Angular form, Angular animations. Um, uh, but in case of Vue, we need to install those are separate. Either install those are separate plugins, or uh, we, need, we can depend on third-party plugins. Uh, so we can consult as a small library. It provides a lot of flexibilities. Here is the founder of uh, UJS, Ivan. Yu. He's an ex-Googleist. Uh, he's from China. He's an. Uh, he's an. Uh, he's a, he was. A, he was working for Google. Uh, um, Anybody have heard? He also was the core developer of Meteor JS. Uh, how many people here uh, have heard, already heard about Meteor JS? Uh, it's uh, it's a Meteor JS is actually an API that is used for developing uh, web applications, Android and iOS applications using a single API. That means using the same same core library and methods, we can uh, we can develop. Uh, both web and Android and iOS. It follows the same same set of library, same set of API. That is the advantage of Meteor JS. That is same set of code. Using the same set of code base, we can develop web, Android, or iOS, iOS apps. So he was also a core developer of Meteor JS. Um, so he was using um, Angular when he was working in Google. Uh, so um, um, for creating a lightweight framework, uh, around 2013, he started the work uh, of WooJS, and uh, the first version of Woo was released in February uh, 2014. And from 2016 onwards, he working full time for the exclusively for the WooJS framework. So uh, this is the history of WooJS. WooJS. Uh, uh, released in 2000, February 2013, uh, sorry, February 2014, um, and first version released in October 2015. Uh, latest version is actually 2.9.6, uh, and not 2.3.3, uh, but the stable version is 2.6.9. That is a stable version. And we uh, now we are waiting for the release of WooJS 3. Uh, most probably, um, uh, this, uh, it will release on uh, coming months. Uh, anybody have heard about this person, Tyler Orton? Uh, anybody? Um, he's a uh, he's a um, founder of the famous uh, famous PHP framework Laravel. Um, he's the owner of Laravel, uh, and. Um, on the beginning stage of Laravel, uh, it's his tweet in 2015, uh, April 2015, that he was trying to integrate his Laravel framework with uh, React, um, but he didn't felt much comfortable. Later, later he changes his plan and uh, started integrating with Vujas, and now, and now uh, since the version Laravel 5.3, Vujas is is one of the optional main optional front end framework. Of Laravel. Uh, so now we can see some code examples.
Um, first, let me talk something about the installation of Woo. Uh, we can use Woo in various ways. Um, I use this here as a CDN version. Um, uh, we can either download Woo from WooJS.org uh, or there. Um, and use it as uh, use it as uh, and we can embed those in our HTML scripts uh, and and also we can use the CDN version of Woo uh, and also we can uh, for the big applications we can large scale applications we can install uh, it as uh, it from uh, Node Package Manager. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so using Node Package Manager is the most popular way of uh, um, uh, using Woo in big applications. Uh, here I use the CDN version of Woo. Now let me explain it. We can either use woo.js or, uh, or woo.min.js. Hope you uh, hope you all know the difference. That is, min.js is the minified version. That is, we can use it as production mode. Uh, and uh, the woo.js is the development development version. Um, in development environment, it's preferred to use the uh, development version that is woo.js because uh, we can see uh, we can get familiar with more uh, warnings. That is, it's a debug mode. So we can get familiar with more warnings errors. Mm. So in development mode, uh, it's preferred to use Woojas. So uh, here, uh, here inside the HTML document, I use the CDN version of Woo, and I created a Woojas instance here. So whenever a Woojas instance is created, it creates a virtual DOM. Uh, that this virtual DOM. Uh, creates a it's, uh, it's actually creates a JavaScript object contains a specific JavaScript structure. So I created a WooJS instance here, who underscore D E T, uh, and uh, uh, inside an HTML I created a view with ID intro, and I need to uh, and I uh, pass pass the ID of this particular uh, div div elements to even parameter and also this WooJS instance contain another object called data and it contains a property called message and I assign the value my first WooJS task and it, uh, uh, let's see inside HTML document um, it, it contains an element with uh, with an interpolation uh, inter with an interpolation this interpolation um, connects connects the H your HTML document into your WooJS instance. So it contains a variable message. So uh, so it provide, uh, so it gives the output of the value of message. If I change the message here It will it will get reflect here too. So this interpolation connects your HTML documents with your WooJS instance. So even is a parameter which accepts the div elements which you need to manipulate in your WooJS instance and uh, here inside data object, you created an, uh, I created a uh, property called message and I given a value. It will get reflect to message variable here. Understood, right? So this WooJS create uh, WooJS instance. It basically creates a virtual DOM.
so it reflects to the uh, real dom only at the final stage of the, of execution So here, uh, here uh, in the second program, uh, I created another MuJS instance here, and uh, uh, and uh, I pass the uh, div element ID of div elements mu underscore d t to e1 parameter, and this MuJS instance contains uh, data objects, and also it contains various properties called first name, last name, and address, and I given various values here. Uh, and also I defined a method here inside this method um, uh, I access the value of first name and last name here and uh, um, uh, and I, I returns uh, I returns this output let's see so here uh, inside interpolation um, I call this I call those variables and also the method my details uh, if I change this these values It will reflect your uh, documents. So this is also an another simple example. Uh, in the HTML, like first the uh, H1, all the tags are being rendered, right? Mm -hmm. Sorry. First the H1, all the divs are being rendered. After that, only the script tag is being executed, right? Uh, the H1, first name, last name, my details. Mm -hmm. After that, only the script tag is getting executed. So how does the H1 know in the first? I didn't. I didn't get you. Mm. Like uh, first the H1, all the H1 tags are getting say, first name interpolations, mm. last name interpolation, my details function interpolation. All those functions are being rendered in the browser, right? Then only the script tag is executed, right? Mm. Mm. Okay. So uh, how does like when it is for, when the first H1 tag when it is being rendered, how does it know the value of first name? Because execution of script tag script tag comes only later. Mm. So, so how does the uh, when the first time the H1 tag is being rendered, how does it know the value of first name? Um, uh, I have passed this. Uh, it, it 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 created a WooJS instance, and I have given the values of its. Uh, um, uh, this interpolation connects to the WooJS instance, so it's directly bind with the with your script. Okay, so only after uh, the whole uh, HTML is being Everything is set only, then it will be rendered. Mm. It's not like H1 rendered, H2, H1 rendered, and then script will render. It's not like that. Mm. Only when the whole H HTML uh, page is set, then only it will be rendered in the browser. Mm. Uh, um, I um, uh, I don't know how exactly I can answer your question. Uh, so, uh, can answer that question? Right. So, uh, in React, uh, you have this thing called as the render function, right? So, uh, like, imagine you you commented out the script tag there. The the H1 would be just printing it out, right? However, when a new view instance is created, it automatically binds to that. And view has an invisible render function that it automatically creates for view instances. It runs that. Uh, so if you do like document on load execute a function, right? Something like that happens here. There are two types of things. One is a view instance. The other is a view component. If that was a view component, it would not have been shown. If it, 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 it is a view instance right now. That is why it is getting like imagine that there's a an imaginary render function within that thing. 
right? View calls it automatically. Okay. Okay. So uh, the H only after all this happens, then only the actual rendering happens, or even the H one time. No. Uh, if you if you were to comment that section out, the script section, that thing that thing would be there. But right? nothing happens. Uh, like uh, the braces, the templating strings, right? That would be just printed out there. Because uh, a view instance is bound to an element with an ID of view underscore attack, a view instance would be bind to that. An invisible render function would be acting on that and like uh, generating the things. Okay, did that, did that make sense? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So here I would like to show how you can use Vue.js templates. Um, here, also, here also I created a Vue.js instance uh, and I passed uh, I passed an ID of HTML element to E1 parameter and uh, and also data objects. Inside data objects uh, uh, there are various properties like first name, last name, and in HTML content property uh, I assign some uh, HTML template here. And also, uh, I assigned some uh, a part of a particular image. I placed the images here uh, in images folder. And also, I given the path to IMG SRC property. And and inside the HTML document, uh, I use uh, I used uh, an attribute called V hyphen HTML. And Assigned H assigned the value HTML contents and inside the interpolation I given the variable HTML content so it will be it will bind to bind here the value of HTML contents will go here and also uh, in ing tag I used an attribute called v hyphen bind src where I assign the value of I am uh, value of the ID of uh, IMG src property so the output will be this so here uh, both html template and image comes here understood right uh, any doubts So this is a basic example of how to use an Vue.js template. And also now uh, I would like to show an example of data binding. Uh, in of view here in uh, here i created an vue.js instance and uh, i assigned the div element to e1 uh, parameter and i created a data object and inside the data object two variables of uh, two properties are there title and href link i assign the value to title property and also another uh, another URL to href link, and uh, this variable uh, I uh, uh, I given um, I given the title with interpolation here in uh, inside this div element, and also uh, I used an an, HD, an attribute for uh, anger pack uh, called v hyphen bind href. And I assign the value of href link. So, uh, so uh, the value, the value of here will be. Uh, so this will be the output. 
uh, here I, I assign the URL link to href link so it goes here uh, so this is another example of HRF link uh, how many people are using jQuery here uh, 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 so uh, how do you feel uh, this with when we comparing with uh, our manipulations in jQuery uh, I mean uh, can you explain how do you implement the same thing in uh, in jQuery uh, or, or normal JavaScript anybody can explain how you can modify uh, the value of a particular element using JavaScript can anybody explain and update hmm. the property values uh, yeah uh, what is the method method and object object and method uh, which one uh, updating the value or document or get element by id yeah document or get element by id there you can assign the value type value. any any properties html can hmm. be updated value can be updated okay uh, so how do you do the same thing in jquery I um, mean, it's, it's, it's a selector dollar of hashtag with the ID dot of HTML or of value. Mm. You can just update the value or HTML okay. of the same. So, uh, what difference you can feel here? Uh, my question. Uh, have you felt any advantage? I use the same thing here. I modified a HTML element, right? In the first program. So, what's, what difference you felt compared with no, uh, compared with JavaScript or jQuery, this is not like uh, just update selecting an element or updating the t uh, node. It's like view updating. We are rendering the view with a uh, with a uh, particular say some kind. Of, we are updating the view with uh, with a uh, set of data. Okay. So what advantage? What is what is the advantage here? Uh, <laughs> See, uh, when we when you use uh, uh, when uh, when you use jQuery in big applications, so for example, you are doing a lot of DOM manipulations. Um, so uh, it will be a big issue of uh, of your maintenance of the source code, right? Uh, you will do more uh, uh, more code like document dot get element by ID and try to uh, uh, try to assign the value to a particular particular element. And also, you try to mod. Uh, how how do you modify a particular new element in jQuery or JavaScript? We can just select the nodes uh, with selector. Yeah, here you can simply bind bind the elements, right? So uh, here the code is very less. So it provides more more code main. Uh, 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 it, uh, it provides more code maintenance, right? That is the that is the main advantage. <laughs> So code maintainability is the biggest advantage here when you compare with uh, core JavaScript or jQuery. Yes. See, in the second example, uh, if you are doing the same thing in jQuery, you will write three lines. Uh, three lines of document dot get element by id you try to modify uh, the elements of uh, html with uh, uh, with uh, but uh, here 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 using Woo, you just you just assign the value to each uh, each variable and uh, try to bind here So in the third example, if you are using in JavaScript or jQuery, uh, can anybody explain how you can uh, how you can assign uh, some uh, uh, HTML templates to an element? How you can modify the HTML element, uh, HTML content inside an element? What, what method you will use? Dot HTML. .html. In, in JavaScript, you will use inner HTML method, right? So here I, I just use the data binding. So here the code will be more maintainable. So uh, 
in big the applications you will certainly you will feel the difference and also you can use various types of events in woo like uh, click uh, on our uh, here i uh, inside the woo js instance um, um, uh, i am uh, I, i pass the uh, id of, a, of an element called data binding uh, to even parameter and inside data objects uh, i uh, create a three variables uh, with integer values and i defined a method here and uh, i uh, inside the method uh i try to multiply multiply these integer values and uh here i am trying to bind the value uh, inside html documents using interpolation um and also here i here on button elements i use an attribute called v hyphen on v hyphen on and i use the click click given here and in uh, for a click event i as I, i i assign the value display numbers so it will execute this so this is an example of click events in woo sorry events so this is an example of click event and also various types of uh, popular events are also available like on mouse over on mouse out on key press on uh, every events are available see uh, this is an example of on mouse over events uh, i am uh, i have used v hyphen on uh, there i assign the uh, um, event called mouse over and mouse out mouse out event is also there so uh, here uh, in this uh, div elements on mouse over i call i call i call the method called change bg color it's defined inside the ujs instance uh here uh, it tries to uh style of obj is the object here uh, 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 it acts as the background color acts as the value of background color here and uh, assign the value green so on mouse uh, so when on mouse our event is fired uh, it tries to call the change bg color method so here on mouse over it changes to green oh. what if we need some parameters to be passed to that function which one change bg color you can pass using normal I didn't get you. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. So here you can pass the values. Okay. Any other things? CSS files. 
Um, uh, you can pass various styles and also. Um, uh, I think you can include an external style uh, style sheet like uh, yeah, something called include include attribute. Using include uh, keyword, you can uh, you can include the external style sheets here inside the object. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, I think so. Hmm. Um, okay. So let me show some examples of uh, class binding or CSS binding. This is an example of class binding. Uh, I created uh, various styles here. I included various styles here. Uh, and I created a VueJS instance uh, with even parameter and data objects. Uh, Inside, uh, I create uh, created more properties like title is active. Here, I assign the value called true. Has error, uh, I assign uh, uh, the value called uh, value true to has error, has error and is active. Um, so, inside the HTML document, uh, I used uh, v hyphen bind attribute, v hyphen bind class, uh, and um, uh, here I uh, here to the active property I assign the value uh, is active. So uh, the value of is active I define the value of is active as true here. So here it will be active true, and also here it will be display error true because I uh, I assign the value true here to as error. Uh, so I can uh, pass multiple styles here to the v bind class property. Attributes. Uh, so if I change uh, these to false, sorry. The class will be different. So do this support two by data binding or just uh, directly bind one and just Sorry. Do this support two-way data binding. Like mm. If you trigger and uh, change the value of data with uh, some other function, mm. that gets reflected in the HTML. Ah yes. So two-way mm. data binding. Is mm. uh, but this change happens on the virtual DOM only, eh? and the uh, not not to the real DOM. So it provides more uh, more performance. That is the main advantage of Google. So here is the another example of class binding. Uh, here I can uh, I can uh, for the attribute v hyphen bind class I can uh, pass multiple multiple classes, multiple variables. Uh, I have passed multiple variables here info class and error class, and I have uh, defined the value of info class to info. Um, I have defined the style for info here. I define the color and background color here and also for the error class. And also for the display error, uh, I have assigned uh, color and background color here. So uh, I passed, uh, so I can pass multiple classes here together to the vbind, vbind class attributes. I can pass multiple as, as an array and also uh, I can pass conditional statements here 
I will show you another examples. This is an example of conditional statements. Uh, here, uh, here I have used uh, in another example I have used the conditional statements. That is, if is active have the value of info class. Uh, uh, if if is active is true, uh, 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 it, uh, the info class uh, info class uh, style will be applied here. Uh, otherwise, if the if the value is false, uh, none of the style will be applied. And uh, if has error returns true, it will uh, the error class uh, styles will be applied. Otherwise, nothing. So I can pass conditional statements here uh, to the v hyphen bind class attribute. So I can pass uh, classes as array or or conditional statements to the v hyphen bind. Uh, understood, right? And another example of uh, another example of class binding. Mm. You can also use inline styles here. Uh, you can pass inline styles to the v hyphen bind attribute. This is an example of inline style. Using uh, a v, v hyphen bind style uh, attribute. Uh, uh, in previous example, it was v hyphen bind class attribute. Now it's style attribute. So you can define inline color uh, styles here. Uh, here for the uh, here for uh, the color, I I have passed active color, uh, the value of active color variable to color as color, and uh, I have defined the font size here as 30. So it will be 30 px. So this is just an example of inline style. So I can bind inline styles too. And also another binding example. Uh, here inside the UJS instance, uh, I have created even parameter and that object, and I have uh, uh, added more two properties for title and is active. I assign the value true here, and uh, here the uh, the value of active will be true, uh, and I have defined the styles here dot active as a uh, background green. So that class is applied here. So these are the examples of uh, CSS binding. I have show you some examples. Style sheets binding. You can also include external style sheets using include uh, include keyword at include. Hmm. Here I am going to show you uh, an example of computed property. Uh, I will show you the difference between method and computed property. Uh, here inside the VUJS instance, uh, I have created one method called get random number one, and also I have defined a uh, computed property here called get random number, and I have called both these uh, method and computed property here. Uh, let me run this computer. So here in the HTML documents, uh, I have called the get random number method here, and after that, I have called the get random number one computer property. So uh, this is the output of a method. This is the output of a computer property. These two are the output of computer property. I have called computer properties two, time, two times. And after that, I again call the method uh, two times, three times. Uh, 
so there is a difference between a uh, method and a computed property i will show you the difference that both these uh, uh, both these methods returns math.random that is a random number but the difference is that both generates random numbers but uh, he, uh, anybody felt the difference uh, this is the output of computer property it returns the same result on the uh, but that uh, that is it, it keeps the same result on uh, between various uh, various calls on each calls it returns the same value only but in case of method it uh, it returns different value that is the difference that its uh, computed properties keeps the value of last call uh, last return value that is the difference uh, hope everybody understood the difference so what if we take the statement sorry please take the statement hmm. ah yeah sure so there are uh, difference in even invoking it right like one is with uh, the parentheses and hmm. the other one is just the name no uh, here i am uh, yeah that's also another difference here i am throwing the uh, using pa uh, uh, parentheses i am calling the property so what is the basic difference by calling invoking it with uh, parentheses and the top hmm uh for methods parentheses is not needed for computer it's uh, yeah but if we need uh, to send some parameters then we need parameters yeah we can, i think uh, yeah yeah so uh, we can use parameters too if we are passing some values parentheses is just an option in case of methods uh, but in case of computer property is needed okay so when hmm. you use parentheses for a computer one it might uh, throw something right? no no uh i think so let's see so parenthesis is needed for this okay so class creating and data binding what is it sorry class creating and data binding uh, class binding is for binding uh, style style styles okay. styles and see uh, so class binding see that is to subclass uh data binding is for uh, binding the data data inside the vujas instance and class binding is for styles css styles uh oh, yes uh oh. Uh, you mean you need to uh, create another uh, oh, okay okay you need to create multiple view instances yeah it's possible is it needed or not no you <laughs> instead of method you can create multiple multiple uh, yeah yeah similar is it possible to use multiple yes so if it's using multiple yes inside a single instance hmm. the property will be applied for both the cases uh yes 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 uh mm, yes mm. Mm. Uh, so uh, in that case it will be applied to both both elements so it will be create a contract with both the cases it is applied seeing the same data again and again in the same page hmm so but we are not supposed to send two here in a single hmm instance right? hmm do we have option to bind two uh, elements in the same instance you don't have such option right uh i think sorry uh, i think two uh, el parameters is not possible you can you can pass multiple values to one uh, multiple uh, element ids to one el parameter hmm. multiple ids to one el parameter uh, i think uh, using 
comma you can define uh, you can pass another uh, another id another element id here okay hmm? then this property will be mapped to all the elements. sorry whatever things we are giving into the data thing yes yes in that case it will be applied to all the elements Uh, okay. In that case, you can uh, you can use another another Vue.js instance. You can create a second instance. So it will be another data structure. You can create any number of instances inside a document. Uh, Uh, I think uh, it's six. Uh, it's a time for break, right? Let's have a time break, okay? Uh, hi. Uh, so I hope you are enjoying the session. Uh, so right now it's tea break. I know. Uh, so while you are enjoying your coffee and cookie, uh, let's just have a quick informal quiz session. So just to refresh your current affairs and everything like that. So uh, I'll simply, I'll just be asking five questions. Uh, you just have to answer the correct one. And uh, if you're able to uh, answer the questions correctly, uh, you'll be able to earn one of his pens, uh, fire merchandise. Okay. So uh, let's start. So the first question. So uh, which company has banned white nationalism? And why separatism uh, recently? I will repeat once more. Uh, which company has banned white nationalism and white separatism recently? <laughs> Facebook. Yeah. So, yeah. Facebook. Yeah. Uh, Facebook is the right answer. Uh, Bismillah. Bismillah. Uh, Paulus. Uh, okay. Yeah. So that's the right answer. So uh, basically, I just one simple. So I may ask the I may ask the question. If anyone has to uh, answer, you can just raise your hand. You can just answer. Okay. So so the next question. So Xiaomi launched a Wechat mobile payment service in India to send money from one bank account to another. Uh, and the simple question is, uh, what the, what is the name? No. Any. Um, M I P. M I P. Yeah, uh, that's the right answer. Okay, so we will get your pen. So, okay, so uh, where are you from? Uh, Perform Edits. Your name? Deepak. So, uh, Deepak from Mathematic who uh, scored that. So, yeah, this will I forgot to give you a pen. Okay, sorry. So, um, moving on. So, the third question. So, uh, Unveil the weird training service. What's his name? Simple. Uh, okay. So, so he raised the hand first. So, Stadio. Yeah, uh, Stadio is the answer. Yeah, your name? Tony. Uh, your firm? Uh, Livers. Okay. So, uh, Tony has uh, said the answer. It's good. Yeah. Okay. So, the whole thing Okay. Thank you. 
so yeah uh, the next question so uh, recently uh, in india a uh, traffic police uh, launched a road safety road, which was named rodeo uh, the answer is uh, you have to tell which is the traffic police which introduced that that robot any one guesses no no i'll just do uh, i'll just do a clue it's one of the metros yeah yeah it's uh, yeah, i said it it's semi traffic police who introduced the robot uh, your name <laughs> <laughs> Sibyl, you are from IBS. So, uh, Sibyl from IBS, we do get in the for that. So, thank you. So, uh, we will be, this is the last question of the informal session. So, uh, recently in the uh, conference, uh, its name was World Conference of Governments, which was held in Dubai itself. So, only that uh, the police department of Kerala has got a recognition for something they have done uh, for something they have developed and implemented so uh, and they had to face a lot of competition from uh, other countries like you and and usa and uh, other countries of countries so this time this much confidence and they were uh, able to come uh, beyond beyond them so they have got the first prize for that uh, implementation that they have done from our our own kerala department so I just want to answer that what uh, what is that? What did they do? Any one guesses? Sorry, uh, I didn't hear it. Yeah. Wahan, Wahan. No. Uh, I'll just give a clue. It's an it's an app. No. It was developed by uh, Kerala Police. It's an app developed by, yeah. That's that's an answer. Traffic Guru. It's the app is developed by Kerala Police, which was developed in the Dubai uh, conference on the day. Yeah, you mean? Jishnu from. So uh, apparently, Jishnu has only is the only one who's got that. Okay. So uh, thank you. So so that's it, guys. So that's the end of our quiz round. So. and we got a little reason time in a bit okay thank you
So let's see how we can bind the values using uh, watch property. It's another way of binding. Uh, here in this example, uh, I have created a VJS instance and in, in, uh, inside the instance, I have created a watch property. And I have defined two functions. Uh, first function tries to convert kilometers into meters. And second one, second function called meters, it tries to convert the meters into kilometers. That is the difference. Uh, these both functions are inside the watch property. Uh, so I have introduced a new attribute here called v hyphen model. It calls the it, it it calls the function kilometers. And a second input element calls the function uh, calls the function meters. So when I try to change kilometers inputs, uh, it converts kilometers into meters. And if I change the value of meters, it converts meters into kilometers and displays in the first input. So so uh, uh, whenever uh, when these inputs uh, the values of these inputs changes. Uh, uh, it converts to whether uh, whether to uh, kilometers into meters or meters into meters. The watch watch property take care of this. Uh, because uh, if if I uh, if I attempt to change the first input element, it calls the kilometers function. If I uh, attempt to change the second input, it it calls the meter function. So these events are tracked by the watch property 
so if i change the value of kilometers it will convert to meters and display the second input because it, because it calls the kilometer function so these things are handled by the watch property hope you understood right so can we use interpolation to display this kilometer no uh, because uh, uh, it's assigned to v hyphen model uh, if uh, if i use interpolation here uh, then uh, sorry outside mm. where outside as a different block maybe that you are thinking that different binding yes no, it's possible can you just sorry hello <coughs> huh what happened this is what you meant right sorry um ah oh, okay come on Okay. Now I ask to display that kilometers, right? Kilometers, yeah, sure. <coughs> okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So actually, to work uh, to be data binding, we need that uh, function. Hmm. I mean, the watch. Hmm. Otherwise, this won't work with normal data. <sighs> uh no uh, uh, uh with v hyphen model uh, normal data binding will not work it's not able to have a watch uh it will it will work but um Uh, the, uh, uh, it, it will work actually, but uh, the difference is that uh, the, the difference in speed. Because in uh, in um, uh, if we are uh, uh, say uh, for example, uh, imagine it's a large form with more inputs, more inputs. So when you attempt to bind using uh, 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 more more data binding, when you include more data binding. The execution will be slow. There, so there is a performance. In that case, what I would ask is, uh, if you are having a large form, then uh, the number of watches you have to write would be so large, right? So yeah, yeah. Will that uh, that will create complexity, right? Sorry. Like for each model, you have to write a watch function, right? Mm. Yes. So if you are having a twenty uh, inputs, then you have to write each watch, watch for each of the input elements. Yeah, you can define one watch property here, and uh, you can define the every every functions inside uh, that particular watch property. Uh, there is a performance advantage uh, for watch property compared with binding. Uh, in case of uh, large forms, because it uh, it works like uh, a real time. Uh, If you are using more inputs, the binding will be uh, to be clear. What I'm asking is like uh, watch. You are having the kilometers function. Hmm. The name of the function is kilometers. Okay. And you do have uh, the same kilometers as a data. So in the V model, are we supposed to give the name of the watch, or we are supposed to give the name of the data? No, I mean we have kilometers as a watch. Ah, okay. We also have kilometers as data. Right. Hmm. Okay. So what I'm asking is the kilometers that we have given in the view bind. Ah yes. Is a view model is the name of the watch or is the name of the data? Or there is some naming conventions that the data and the watch must be having the same name. All right. No, uh, I'll I'll explain. Like uh, you can change the kilometers uh, uh, underscore data. Kilometers underscore. I mean, in the data object, in the data object of uh, new instance. Mm. Okay. You can change kilometers underscore data. Okay. So data is kilometers data, so you can uh, change the corresponding place where this should be changed. Yes. So the function you have to change, right? Huh? Actually, I didn't get you. <laughs> no, the confusion is because what I. 
name for the work as well as the data. So I'm getting confused whether we should use the name of the data or the name of the work in the V. Just change the this. Ah. Ah, yeah, so what's the problem? Uh, can anybody explain this question? I didn't explain. Okay. You're having kilometers uh, in the data, right? Uh, yes, kilometers yes. underscore data, yes. Ah. And in the watch, you're having another one kilometers. Ah, yes. Okay. Now in the V, we have a name called kilometers. No, no. Uh, this will not work because it tries to uh, try to access the variable per kilometers, but it's not defined. No, I, I will put that un, uh, as underscore data. Which one? This one? Yes. Ah, yeah. Then this will work. Okay. Okay. Uh, can you that show that, please? No, to be clear, the question is. Is the name that we should give in the V model? Is that the watch function or the data? That is the question. Watch function. The V model you are giving a value, right? Is that the name of the watch function or is that the name of the data? Uh, data is defined here. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> Actually, I made the value. Mm. Watch order. Watch. 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 Uh, okay. Still any issues? <laughs> No, the problem is you are using the same names in the data as well as the watch. So we are getting confused. Like, what is the real value that we should use for the V model? Is that the name of the watch or the name of the data? Ah, okay. Uh, well, it will. No, I will uh, tell you how to do that. Uh, you can check the V model. No, uh, this V hyphen model, uh, it will try to access only watch. Yes, that is. I, I, I get only now. <laughs> okay, it tries to access only watch, not data. So, but uh, for every input, uh, if only uh, one or two inputs, they can use normal binding. So you can access the data. Ah, yes. Uh, but in case of large forms, watch property is better. Right. Uh, so now, now, now let's see an example how to create a uh, basic single page application. So, for creating, a, uh, it's an example of a single page application. So here on each click, it, it, it loads a separate component. It's an example of a single page application. For the development of single page application, uh, you need to include another another JS file, who, uh, who hyphen router dot JS. Hmm? If you are using the dot package manager, you, you need to install the router plugin. So you need a separate uh, router uh, JS plugin here, who hyphen router. Um, and you have defined uh, two separate templates here, and you have I have defined a uh, constant called roots, uh, and, and and I I have defined the uh, IDs of both components here, uh, root one and root two, and I have created a new router instance here, uh, and pass the uh, constants called roots. And, and also I have created a Vue.js instance 
and uh, and so to the EL parameter, I have passed the element of the ID app, and also uh, the router constants. Uh, and also I have I have introduced the new uh, HTML element called router hyphen link and and two attribute here and there I can pass the ID of uh, ID of components root one or root two. So when I attempt to click here, uh, it will load root one components uh, and when I uh, attempt to click uh, uh, the link two, it will load the root two components. That will be the outputs. And the output will be reflected here in router hyphen view tags between router hyphen view. So on clicking uh, on each component link, uh, the output will be uh, will be here router hyphen view tag. So in this kind of way, you can uh, call different components, separate components. In this kind of way, you can develop the uh, it's a, a most basic example of a single page single page app. Uh, have you uh, felt any difference uh, here uh, uh, for creating a single page app when comparing with Angular? Uh, any Angular developers here? Uh, you felt any difference here when comparing with Angular? Uh, uh, which one? Yeah. Mm. Okay. One major difference here is here you are. I have included a separate file. Oh, currently you are, you are mentioning all the HTML and all the things together and like JSX index. That's it. That's the difference. Everything is JavaScript. Mm. So if you want to then it doesn't make sense if you use a different framework or anything. Okay, like no, uh, I mean, uh, have you any felt any difference in implementation uh, for calling components of IT? No. No, it's different. Mm. You write an application. Mm. So, if you write an application, there is a way. Mm. You have to create a directive, you have to do all these steps. Mm. Uh, if Right. There is something like a like a package is there. All the things from that. In and it's actually like this. And I'm You can assume an IP address and call that the Kubernetes and Docker. No, no. I just uh, assign the, the ID of the components, router 1 and router 2. No, IP address also can be there. No, not possible. In that case, no, you can tag you can just call components. So in that case, you can call it the uh, Kubernetes or the Docker. Uh, sorry, I didn't get you. <laughs> no, see, uh, Kubernetes you can assume that is a IP address. Mm. Docker also. Mm. So from that, the parts you can call for that. That's an no. It's just an example to call uh, different components. Uh, yeah. A single page application consists different components. Uh, that's it. I, I I just try to call call these components. Yes. Yes. You are not scope for any IP address or anything. I just try.
Um, so, uh, comparing with Angular, you need a separate plugin to router.js. In case of Angular, every uh, router is built in. It's a built in feature. It was fine. Angular is actually a private frame. Hmm. And Angular is considering their system as a platform that can build single frame. Use a platform library, we can customize like that. If Just like some CSS pages, I see some applications. So, This is an exa example of different components. Uh, you can create components of, uh, for uh, using a method or components using uh, objects. And you can assign a particular template here, an HTML template here. Uh, and if you call that particular component using uh, uh, using a tag, uh, uh, you can reuse these components by using it as tag. You can reuse this any times. But you need to create separate Vue.js instance. So this is an example of component reusability. I have defined a component called test component here and, uh, and, and assigned a template. Uh, and also uh, I reuse this uh, component uh, using uh, different Vue.js instances. I have created three instances uh, and uh, three instances with the name of different uh, div elements. I have created three, totally three new elements here and called, uh, called the ID of components. Understood, right? Why we need this, this many new objects? Uh, uh, because, uh, 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 each each Vue instance is for a particular element. Uh, I have assigned only one element here, component and rest of test to the EL parameter. But you can uh, you can assign uh, you can assign uh, multiple uh, multiple elements here. That's not an issue. Uh, but the question is like. Uh, mm. We need this component, like for this case, we may encounter this case when we are uh, doing some for each for this see something else. Hmm, okay. Uh. During that process, are we supposed to create uh, several instances, instances of view to show that list? For like for each item, do we need a separate instance? No, you can you can use it as uh, one single instance. Uh, you uh, you can you can put this test com three test component in a hmm. single ID, like. Hmm, yes. Uh, 
I think uh, you can pass this uh, as comma, but I am not sure. Uh, uh, but you, you can surely pass. You can surely pass to an, uh, pass an, uh, pass multiple elements to a single instance. That's true. So this is an example of compound reusability. So now uh, I should talk something about the uh, future of UJS. So now we are all are expecting the next version of UJS 3. Now the latest version is uh, stable version is 2.6.5 uh, and the latest version is 2.9.6 something. Uh, yes. Uh, so uh, on coming months UJS 3 will be released and we can expect it to be more faster because uh, even you tries to rewrite the virtual DOM completely. Uh, the name of the DOM is Tab DOM, uh, and he is planning uh, planning a complete rewrite of virtual DOM uh, for uh, making it more uh, more optimized. So we can expect it to be more faster, and also uh, he tries to uh, minimize the features for making it more uh, lightweight. Uh, if we knew, we need to use a particular uh, feature, we can use it as a separate plugin or can depend on third party libraries so he tries to make it more lightweight uh, and also we can um, uh, we can expect more maintainable source code uh, uh, and also uh, we can expect more uh, more typescript support too he is not enforcing typescript uh, just like angular but we, uh, uh, we can expect more typescript support so uh, i have a doubt Oh. Like in view, I don't know more about view bridges and all this stuff. So here I saw like there are some syntactic shows so like we bind, uh, we model something similar. So this way we can show data, we can repeat, we repeat something similar, right? So elements. I mean, ah, uh, so is the point when I'm building an application and using we if bind or anything like that? If anything the feature, I want during my account is that uh, you can disable uh, uh, for binding uh, it's, uh, it's there by default uh, but uh, in some cases you can uh, you can disable those particular feature inside uh, inside the not package manager if you are using it yeah if you are using script so if you are using this input package anything Potential of the effect to be bundled to my total bill, right? I really want to take from that. We, if a plan is if I really want to take from this, is it? Can you repeat? I mean, I'm not going to take from the view of the CMA application. Okay. I'm not going to take from the view of the CMA application. It's possible. Uh, yeah, uh, you can. Uh, you are free to make any changes on it uh, on the core as well, because it's uh, okay. Because it's open uh, I don't want to change the code. I don't want. I just want to change the code. That's it. Uh, so, uh, no, I would like to say that further. Yeah, sure. Yes, yeah, so like, because Angular and all people have some options. It is actually modular. We can just import the module we actually need, and uh, so that when we are bundling, finally we will not be getting the extra modules. Uh, so is that so? Vjs is uh, actually a single file with uh, core stuffs, or uh, it is supporting modularity so that we can just uh, use the module that we need. What thing you need to disable? What thing you need to disable? Can you tell me an example? For example, if I am not going to uh, use this V if at all, I'm just going to use this for just uh, finding some data. Uh, it's a part of it's a part of virtual stub dog stub dog uh, those methods. 
വർച്വൽ ഡോം സോ Uh, it's not possible because it's a it's a built in method of stuff dom actually so actually we just no, irrespective of vjs no no I, what i'm asking is irrespective of what are the modules we are going to use in vjs yeah. we have to include the complete set of file maybe 6kb or 8kb that that is not going to differ with the amount of uh, components or amount of modules that we are going to use with vjs yeah. use with our project am i right so it is not supporting modularity it's just a single file like jquery Mm-hmm. we have to include the complete file if we need jquery for if we just are uh, going to use for, for uh, you can, uh, it, it supports the modularity i uh, i show you uh, uh, here this example is using uh, the cdn version of uh, if you are using a um, um, uh, uh, node package manager you can organize all these things answers okay. that is better for uh, that is that is that that's way is actually better other not about this i do have one more doubt so how do we have uh, some services like singleton with this vj single page app like for example for uh, angular we already have services provided by them and uh, react it is not a framework still they provide external libraries like uh, rxj and not rxj uh, redux to connect with the react app so do we have any opportunities to like for example i am very familiar and i am uh, so good with uh, like i am understanding redux in a better way mm-hmm. and it helps me a lot so is there any possibility for me to include redux to vue js yes do they have some libraries for that or uh, we have to go with the traditional approach of yes, redux yes no which way is possible like do we have external libraries to connect redux with vue or we have to go with the traditional approach uh, preferred by redux either way okay so there is a like redux awesome yeah. and also there is also something called next they also have some oh next is actually uh, yes that they have some support got it okay like new x new x what's the name exactly new x new x so it connects redux and view yeah it's you know, redux packet and view okay so uh, anything as far as now what i feel is uh, this uh, vjs must be a better replacement for jquery i guess for small applications but uh, do this really support or is this better for us to use in enterprise level applications like where we use angular and react no uh, it focuses on view layer only unlike angular uh, it's just for uh, creating uh, making uh, ui components better so uh, this is not best fit for uh, single page applications yeah it's but it's for single page applications uh, yeah uh, uh, it, it can create the ui components that's it so so from our understanding is like view is actually a bare bone framework like express So it will really if you have already an existing application just consider a state type of India application. So it's very difficult to change all these things for them, right? Because it's a huge application. The new like frameworks will really help us to integrate with them. That's it. Get a simple script tag or something. It's really easy because for any I have a problem when I was an Angular developer, I don't know about any of the JavaScript or any of the system I'm doing. So if one person starts learning javascript first without learning any frameworks or anything like that and this Familiar with the view. I'm just working in the Bangalore. I am also with him. Okay. I just. Okay. 
It's like uh, if you are just writing it like this, uh, this is not going to support the uh, uh, ES6 ES syntaxes, right? So mm -hmm. I'm asking whether, uh, otherwise we have to manually debate it with the No, no, we are going to use it here. So we are going to use the script over there, and we can use the script there. Then, next, we are going to use the application, The way you write ng generate view app, right? You can do the same thing with view also. View also has its integrated CLI, and view uses something called dot view files, where you write the whole logic in a single file, right? You would write like a temp, uh, you split it into like template, scripts, and style. You write the whole thing in a single file. Like in Angular, you write in HTML, CSS, and TS files, right? In view, just write the whole logic in the single file, and the, it's the same thing, but you actually split it into different. Uh, what do you say? Tags. Template tag, you have a script tag and a style tag. So these pages can be separated like different columns and different folder and it can be important. Yeah, the same the way same how you architect an Angular application can so do that. The same stuff that we are doing in Angular, we can do here. Basically, it's almost like but, Angular. But Angular. what is the real difference that... Uh, I mean, I'm an Angular developer, but I feel like uh, when you generate small applications, right? The way, uh, the way, it's all template literals. You're not creating classes. You just okay. create template literals and you just say data. And you have the input properties like watch. Uh, I didn't see the one way compute and all that. That's not there. Okay, in, in I, in Angular, okay right? I see you told about watch. The question I have is is definitely supporting pure data binding or we really need the watch function to do the watch. Uh, what I feel like in Angular, we have something called observables, right? Yes, you can subscribe to that. Okay. I feel like so, so on chain subscriber, it is actually on chain subscriber. It's, it's something similar to that. Okay, the view inbuilt has a two way uh, data binding view. By, uh, View model or something. That is the two-way data binding of uh, what do you say in view. Okay. The watch is something. If uh, if the for example, if you have uh, something like on change in core JavaScript. Yeah, yeah, something like that. On change. If the property changes, this method runs. That's what watch does. So this is actually passing inside data. That's a kilometers, right? Yeah. The kilometers variable. Inside that uh, watch, there is the same value should be there because it's uh, same to view. Like. That is a question I remember. If it's two-way data binding, uh, whenever the value in the view is updated, uh, the class value values value all should be also updated, right? Yes. So, so according to our understanding, we don't need to add value to that. Uh, it doesn't require to be used to two-way data binding. That's what I said. You don't need to use it with two-way data binding. Can watch the property. For example, uh, in for example, if the value changes in a button click, right? I have something like uh, I have stored the variable. I am displaying it in a template. Literal, saying the name is equal to Asif. My name is Asif. So I am writing name is Asif, and Asif is the name is equal to Asif, right? And on a button click, I am changing it to some other name. Something like uh, on change in Angular. Yeah, exactly that. So when I when I click the button, I need some function to run, right? 
So over there, the watch function watches the change in that and runs something else. Right? If the value changes, it runs something else. So if I want, I can console log it or run some other side effects. Okay, exactly. Uh, and in the callback, you get the old value and the new value. Yeah. That's so right. until it's two data data winning itself, there is no need to update the model value. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter. You don't have to use it to two data. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, and love. Yeah, exactly. Plus we are. Yeah. On on changes. Yeah. You will get the previous updated the first time. And the new value. Exactly. Thanks. Things that the unpermissed applications are the native applications that work. Native application. Yeah, native application. Native application. Can you explain what do you mean by native application? Unpermissed application. So unpermissed. Application with the unpermissible applications. No, that's it. Native. You support building hybrid applications. Yes, yes. Applications. Oh, exactly. Who okay. mm. um, is mostly mostly using for web and single page applications only? Hmm? Uh, we can uh, we can use who with native script too. Just like Angular, yeah. uh, we can use uh, we can use native script too with you uh, for developing both Android, iOS, and ah, yes, yes. Uh, we can uh, we need to depend on native scripts. From that, that it can be see you can call any application from that cloud. That that is the thing that I feel that. <laughs> Yeah, that's all. For React, there is a uh, for uh, there is a React Native, but React is more thrown for the, see that see virtual reality application something just like yeah, not yes. things. Yeah. This is some something what I feel is it connects that the, see I put that um, uh, what is cloud. <laughs> Any other questions? I think that's all. And thank you guys and thank you Nirmal for a wonderful discussion on users. And uh, uh, I invite uh, Dean Shed or MD to present a memento as a token of appreciation. Hello? Okay, as you all know, I probably is a monthly event. And we we have this wonderful discussions here debates actually. So I invite you all to be present on our coming events as well. So we are on social, so please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and all the other stuff. Okay. Thank you guys, and we will continue having a discussion. Okay. The video will be just paused, so you can ask whatever you want. All technical. Okay. Thanks, guys. Okay. Uh,